Well, hello there. We are at Vintage Computer Fest 2023. These three fine ladies are showing us this incredible setup that they've that they've got here. Now that everybody else is cleared out, so like you know, we can uh, uh, we can allow them to present in pseudo piece. They will disrupt the piece with their audio. But uh, let's 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 see. Give us a tour. What is this thing? I see a lot of computers here. Right, there's so, one Mac, one Mac Mini, one another thing. Just tell me, tell me what's going on. So the purpose of this project was to demonstrate how a Macintosh Plus could be used as a DAW or digital audio workstation for recording uh, electronic music using MIDI. Mm -hmm. So a bit of the background here, uh, I work with vintage computers, mostly IBMs and old Mac and compact Macintoshes. Erica is an uh, audio engineer and uh, her partner uh, Andrea is an artist and uh, we, we teamed up to do this work. So this is Mac Donna. Mac Donna is the 3061st Macintosh manufactured the week of May 21st, 1984. Mm -hmm. In 1986, she was upgraded from an original Macintosh to a Macintosh Plus with one megabyte of RAM. I uh, inherited her uh, from a colleague at the Danbury Hackerspace in December, mm -hmm. and I upgraded the memory to four megabytes and restored the original analog board. Mm -hmm. So, and, the, and how much storage do they have? These things don't come with much storage, right? No. Uh, by default, a Macintosh Plus only can read and write an 800 kilobyte floppy disk, something that will come up later. Okay. There are add-ons, like external hard drives, the fast ones using SCSI. So we use a device called a Blue SCSI in the back to simulate a SCSI hard drive using a, a SD card. So oh. this Macintosh has a two gigabyte hard drive on that Blue SCSI, and on that a very large collection of software that we obtained via the internet. So, I see. Is that some of that software running here? Yes. So the Macintosh on itself does uh, not really have audio capabilities. It has a simple uh, eighth of an inch monorial output jack, the, the kind you would have on your walkway if your stereo speakers stunk. Mm -hmm. And that's it. The Macintosh does not speak MIDI. However, this device down here, the uh, this is the MIDI controller. This does speak MIDI, and the Macintosh uses ser serial connections to communicate with it through the modem and printer serial ports. Wait a minute, the modem? Yes. Tell me what's going on here. Macs don't come with modems in this era, right? No, they didn't come with modems in that. Uh, they did not come with modems in that era. But the modem, they have a port for you to plug the modem into. Okay. So what this device does is it uses, these are two serial ports. Mm -hmm. It uses the serial port to communicate back and forth with the Macintosh. Mm -hmm. And we have software on the Macintosh that can talk to the MIDI controller. In this case, we have an early version, an early Macintosh version of the tracker application Cubase, which is still in use today. Mm -hmm. Cubase began its life as an Atari ST application, and this Macintosh is running Cubase uh, 1.2. Okay, all right. Um, and so that's the software that we're seeing right here, right? Yes. Uh, could, could we could we have a volunteer, maybe this volunteer, <laughs> come over and demonstrate? This is v our fine friend Vivi, who's gonna Show us a little bit. Okay, all right. So you've got what's what's going on here? So start start playing some stuff. Let's let's see it. Let's see it work. Well, we can see the this. We have a track loaded already, so we can play that. Okay. Okay. This is this is my chance to ask Erica to help a little bit. What's the, what what's going on here? If there's no MIDI support on the Mac. Then how on earth are we getting this fine audio? Well, lucky for us, at the time that this technology was being invented, because computers didn't generally have very high onboard sound capabilities, devices like this to run externally were designed. Now, the Roland MT32 here was a very popular PC sound card, right? People would plug this in, they'd use it behind their games. You know, basically inspired what early PC games sounded like in the first place. The Yamaha FM sound generator FB01 here, also plugged into another MIDI output, was kind of the same deal. It came out a couple months before, not as popular. MT32 kind of became the standard. But 
how they receive data here. You'll notice with each individual track, there's note data here. On the x-axis, on the y-axis here, we have various tracks and channels, right? Uh -huh. Each of these channels has specific note data. They're okay. all going out over MIDI all at once, right? Okay. These sound cards, or sound modules as they're often referred to, have the ability to have various instrument parts which are then set to listen on individual ones of these channels. Okay, so each one of these tracks is actually a different instrument? Is that what I'm hearing here, more or less? Uh, yeah. Here it's, here it's all sequencer data. It can be anything, but once we get to this point here, um, we can basically take the signal apart and say, is this one, two, three, four, or five, or what are these? Here in this case, piano one is acoustic piano number two. That's can you, change, can you change the instrument? Yeah, there are a number of different uh, piano plugins, acoustic piano one, two, three, electric two, three, they all sound slightly different. Okay, right. let's, let's, let's hear something. Is that changing on this channel? Oh wait, yeah, now I hear the pew pew pew. Okay, that's noticeable. The bass is changing, right? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, let's get a little bit lower so we can hear you all again. And uh, um, and what's happening here with this uh, with this giant board here? Let's turn down the volume a bit so we can hear you a little bit better. This is a Tascam 488 Mark Mark II uh, all-in-one mixer. In this particular case, it was designed to mix eight channels down to an individual standard audio cassette tape. We're not using that here. We're using it to sum all four channels coming out of these: the right and left output of the Yamaha. FB01 and the MT32 and turn them into a coherent output, which we are recording. Okay, so, so this looks like Audacity. I'm familiar with this from recording my podcast. So this is this is this is what kind of computer are we looking at now? We are looking at an Intel Mac Mini. Okay. All right. And uh, in a period setup, an Apple II would have also. Uh, would have often been in this role. Uh, another popular solution would be to use MIDI to synchronize a tape machine to uh, handle track recording. Um, okay, so Andrea, do you mind explaining us what this final computer is doing? So this final computer is for gathering all the data that we've been talking about before, which is going to be on that computer, and then using what this computer is able to do with respect to uh, writing to floppy disks, uh, in a way that is readable by DOS format computers. So wait, why not just use that computer to do it? You already got it set up. Because, as Dan mentioned earlier, and this is where we would uh, come back to, is that uh, one of the limitations of this computer is its ability to write um, disks, the diskettes. And, uh, the Macintosh can, uh, Plus can only write to an 800 kilobyte floppy disk. Okay. This is a bit of a challenge. For those of you that remember the early DOS floppy, uh, three inch floppy disks for 720 kilobyte floppy disks. The Macintosh gets an extra uh, extra 80 kilobytes of storage out of the same disk because it uses a different hardware algorithm, not a software algorithm. The disk has a variable write speed where the edge of the disk moves slower than the inside of the disk, allowing you to get that extra, that extra storage. The problem is that a Mac Plus disk cannot be read by a DOS machine. It cannot be read by late uh, Mac machines. You could take a US if you took a USB floppy drive and plugged it into a uh, plugged it into uh, uh, a modern Macintosh, it would not be able to read or write those disks. So part of our display here, we wanted to give visitors the opportunity to compose their own music and have a couple of things to take home. Mm -hmm. One of the things that this station does is. Not only can you create an MP3, but you can email it to yourself. Okay. What this does is it allows you to take home the MIDI file. So on that Macintosh, you're creating the MIDI file and you're saving it to a disk. This is a little file server running. This is a Macintosh SC30, which can read and write 1.44 megabyte DOS compatible floppies. So we have a box of blank DOS format floppies. Put one in, it recognizes it as a DOS floppy. We can see the MIDI file that's been placed on the file server. 
copy to the disc, put a label, and then the visitor could take this home if they have a USB floppy drive they, or like a Windows 95 machine, they can open it up, see a MIDI file, and play it. Very nice. It allows us to give uh, our visitors uh, a little keepsake to take home. A little piece of material culture. Very good. Um, this is all cool, this whole setup here. Um, I, I guess I have to ask, what about these, these Macintoshes? Uh, you must have just had these uh, um, sitting around in pristine condition, oh. and you just, uh, um, you just kept them in good shape over the years, and so you just pulled it out, right? Or you bought it really like for like $600 off of somebody who sells it, them, them refurbished or something like that. Is that. Was that all part of the project? How did you, how did you get to make that we, happen? We came across them. Uh, I started with, with Mac Donna down there, Ooh, that's her name, huh? Yes, that's her name, because she's an 80s girl who makes music. Uh-huh, she's kind of a diva. Yeah, except this one won't start pointless screaming at Lady Gaga for no reason, destroying whatever credibility she had left as an artist. Oh, okay, uh, well, you know. So, what, uh, that came from a collection of a, a member of the Danbury Hackerspace who had founded a successful internet startup in the 90s who was retiring in Florida. And at one point, he had worked in computer repair and had like a basement full of old machines from that customers had been done with. That was one of those machines. Uh, we opened it up. The flyback transformer for the display wasn't working. There was some rust inside. Uh, we put a lot uh, with the uh, case over here. Helped a lot. Uh, case has been behind the scenes on a lot of this stuff, but they helped a lot with that work with the Mac Plus. And we worked on that video something awful to get the screen to actually work. Cool, so this this is effectively the crew. We've got the three of you here. We've got Case over here, who's also recording, so Case, Case is uh, not appearing in this film. Um, but, uh, um, but, but, but it, so this is a pretty cool setup. What I'm gonna ask is, um, we're, we're seeing something that's pre-recorded. What would it be like to mess with this thing live? And so this is where I'm gonna make Vivi make an appearance. Uh, hi. Hi, Vivi. Um, so let's uh, um, let, let's see what's happening here. So you just you just hit stop. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so I won't overwrite this beautiful compo composition. Uh huh. For now, I'll just take everything except the drums out. Okay. You can just select it and hit delete. Uh huh. Um, then you pick a track. So this is the bass. Okay, turn it up a little bit. We can't hear that uh, because I turned it down. Yeah, I, I turned it down on there. Okay. Maybe even a little higher, I think. There you go. Yeah, good. Perfect. All right. Let's, let's... Okay, so play, play a little bit. Let's hear it. Uh, so that's um, basically on a track now. Yeah, and I can get a little toolbar here. Uh huh. I can say I can cut it right over here, and and I can delete the, the extra. Then I can copy and paste to repeat the bass line. Okay. What does it sound like now? It's, I don't know why it ended up here, but. Okay. All right, so we hear it. We hear it layering in. All right. Okay. So, so what? What's next? Can we? Can we? Can we get another instrument in there? Alright, 
Cool. And then we have the two tracks recorded. I don't want to go too long. But okay. We'll, all right. Well, we'll why don't we? Why don't let's, yeah, let's play it all together. Let's hear what see, hear what it sounds like. <laughs> Everybody clap or snap. <laughs> Hell yeah. Y'all did this. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is quite the setup. Yeah. Woo. All right. Well, thank you for the amazing demonstration. All right. You know what we failed to do? We failed to do this. Which is to get all of y'all's names. So I want to. I want you we to also, line up. We also can't be named. I don't know if you call it a production company, but the name for this group that we're working on, uh, Two Max One Cut. Oh. <laughs> it's printed on uh, my little ticker right tape there, on right top of the test cam. cam. What about Basic Bitches? What was that? Well, that Basic Bitches is the name of a uh, a femme women's queer. Uh, Vintage retro computing collaborative that I, we're starting, and okay. kind of like an art collective, but you know, core. Um, cool. You know, everyone loves retro computers. I don't know who's into this this art thing. I mean, we love you, but you know, everyone you know has retro computers hanging in their homes. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it gave us an opportunity to make a basic pun. Okay. That's, that's very, very good. And could you could you each give your names? Dan Fitzgerald. Mm-hmm. And I'm Andrea. Uh-huh. And finally. Uh, Case Wise. I'm very nice. I mean, and we are all at once. And we, we are, are basic bitches. bitches. <laughs> and two max one cut. <laughs> We've been thinking up names, workshopping it. Very good. Perfect. Thank you for taking the time. All right, bye. Bye. Bye-bye.